I'm sorry, my love by Simona Soul on Joy Read App. Chapter 1 I Wish You a Happy Divorce. Happy Third Wedding Anniversary. Do come home earlier. I think you'll like the surprise I've prepared. After sending the message out, Leanna McKinney placed her phone down before re entering the kitchen. She turned the stove off and proceeded to slice the vegetables while still having fun despite the busy moments of preparing a special dinner. It was as if the ignored message did not affect her mood at all. A servant who was standing beside Liana then offered her assistance. Madam, let me help you. It's all right. You can work on other things. I want to personally cook for him tonight. In response, the servant replied enviously, Madam, you and Master really do love each other very much. Liana did not respond as she pursed her lips. Do Aiden and I look in love? More like an act rather than love. At 7 o'clock p.m., the servant cleared the area knowingly as the man of the house, Aiden Pearson, arrived home. Just as Liana finished setting up the table, the heat radiating from the man shrouded her from behind before he held her jaw and violently kissed her lips. Stunned for a split second, she then quickly pushed him away. While holding on to her waist, Aiden pinched her chin and uttered emotionlessly, Didn't you tell me to get back earlier for this? I didn't. It's our third wedding anniversary today, so I really do have a present for you. Her voice was melodious when she explained. After hearing that, he let go of her before adjusting his slightly wrinkled shirt and said, I don't need any presents from you. After all, you've given me more shocks than surprises. At that, she could only smirk as she went into the kitchen instead of rebuking him. Soon, the last dish made its way to the table. Liana sat opposite Aiden as she poured red wine for him, then for herself. With her glass raised in the air, she stated, Cheers to our third anniversary. Under the light, one could see the man's handsome features with his pursed lips and slight frown, which hinted that he was not satisfied about this. Yet, Liana only smiled at this as she did not expect any response from him, so she raised the glass and drank it all at once. After downing the wine glass, she poured another serving for herself. Just like that, she kept on drinking glass after glass. In the end, the tipsy Liana plopped on the dining table and looked at the stoic man before slurring her words at him, Hey, Aiden. Can't you even give me a smile on a day like this? What do you expect me to do? Get drunk and crazy like you? Or continue sitting through this extremely boring anniversary? How is this boring? Not everyone gets to celebrate their wedding anniversaries, you know? Perhaps, this might even be our last one. Aiden snorted lightly like he had heard a joke. Will you let that happen, then? Waving the cup in her hand, Liana became teary-eyed. I, don't think I will. At that moment, the man had had enough of this conversation and stood up to head upstairs. Pulling his tie off in frustration, he took off his suit jacket and wanted to remove his shirt before a pair of soft hands held him, accompanied by a strong scent of alcohol. Standing behind him, Liana drunkenly said, Don't be in such a rush. You haven't got my present yet. Her words made Aiden turn around with his hands in his pocket while he looked at her silently. With reddened cheeks, she gazed at him innocently with her puppy eyes, forming an irresistible eye contact. Aiden could not help but instinctively gulp at the sight of that. As much as he tried not to admit it, the woman in front of him was a true beauty that would make any man's heart skip a beat. Otherwise, he would not have found himself caught in her trap back then. As he looked down, his eyes landed on her luscious lips that were dyed even redder by the wine. The moment her hands slipped under his shirt, Aiden immediately lifted her chin and smacked her lips apart with his. The slight pain made Liana groan softly. Once they were on the bed, her gaze became lost as her hands were merely holding on to his neck. The man then held her sides and raised his eyebrow with a hint of silent mockery. Didn't you say you don't want this? Don't you know that a woman always says the opposite of her wishes? With a cold laugh, he kissed her again. Liana was being extra proactive tonight as she had torn his lips with her teeth while the two kissed in the faint smell of blood. This kiss was more like a fight in which whoever won would take the lead. 
Just as he was about to retrieve the condoms from the nightstand, she suddenly announced, Aiden, let's divorce. The man on top of her stopped in his tracks, what did you say? Although she knew he had heard it loud and clear, she still repeated, let's get a divorce. In an instant, Aiden lost all interest as he rose slowly from the bed and replied in a cold tone, how much do you want this time? The trick's up her sleeve, just to get money from me. I swear. I don't want a single penny. From under her pillow, Liana took out a document of divorce agreement. Have a look at it. If everything's in order, then you can just sign it. With a solemn look on his face, Aiden warned, You better stop this now, Liana McKinney. I'm not in the mood for games. Didn't I tell you that there'll be a surprise, tonight? See, isn't this something worth celebrating? He looked at her emotionlessly while feeling strangely annoyed at the smile on her face. She then continued with a laugh, I wish you a happy life after divorce, Aiden. After a few seconds of thought, he finally replied, Are you being serious right now? Liana nodded. Now, this really is a surprise, isn't it? All right. Make sure you don't regret it. After leaving this statement, he slammed the door shut and left coldly. Looking down at the divorce agreement that Aiden did not even spare a glance at, she finally let out a grin after a long while. I also wish you a happy life after divorce, Liana. That same night, Liana had finished packing her stuff, which only filled up one luggage bag. As for all the shoes, bags, accessories, and clothes that Aiden bought for her, she did not even take one of those. After all, they were given to her unwillingly. Upon their divorce, she found these glamorous objects to become ostentatious. In her eyes, they were useless. Before she left, Liana looked at the divorce paperwork left on the cold table, which she then chose to pick up eventually. While passing through the dining area, she took a look at the dining table and found that Aiden's cutleries were squeaky clean as if it was not even touched at all. It seemed like this year's wedding anniversary was not as acceptable as she imagined. Fortunately, this is also our divorce anniversary. Aiden might even get a laugh out of this when he looks back on this in the future. This might have been the most satisfying thing she had done in a long while after she was married. As she was sitting in the cab and staring at the passing scenery outside the window, she finally felt a sense of burden being released. After being a rich and glorious knockoff madam for the past three years, it was time to return to the slums. Chapter 2 How Shameless of You after knowing that Liana requested a divorce, as her best friend, Zoe Hart took about ten minutes of her time, cursing the heck out of Aiden before she finally asked, that the asterisk starred really didn't offer you a single penny? Do you know how much he pays those models he's screwing around with? He's actually such a miser to his own wife. He's not a miser. Besides, I have been taking quite an amount of money from him these last three years. It's actually quite fortunate that he didn't want it all back. You can't possibly think like that. You guys are husband and wife, his money is yours, and your money is still yours. Besides, he screws you for free every day, so what's wrong with spending a bit of his money? Liana felt her eye twitch. Can you tone it down? After Zoe calmed down, she responded, I apologize for not controlling my rage. While lying on the couch, Liana cursed angrily as she could not suppress the urge anymore. Do you know what that son of a b asterisk tch told me today when I asked for the divorce? He asked me how much I wanted from him. He didn't even care to glance at the divorce paper and yet, he had the audacity to assume my greed over his assets? Did he have to go that far? That reminds me, why did you want a divorce? You should just drag this on and see who gives up first. After hearing that, Liana composed herself and replied, Oh. That's because Mia's pregnant. Mia Clark was a model on the rise recently, and she had been getting a bit too intimate with Aiden, to the point where even the blind knew something was up. After marrying for three years, Liana knew just how much he detested her, as it was considered very generous of him to come home twice every month. Even when they were doing the deed, it was purely physical, without an ounce of feeling. He wanted to make her suffer by any means possible. Since Mia was not the first woman to have intimate relationships with him, Liana did not really care for this. 
Yet, this all changed when she was happily picking out a present for their third anniversary a week prior before Mia suddenly appeared in front of her with a pregnancy report and stated haughtily, I'm pregnant now, so it's time for you to vacate the position of Mrs. Pearson to me. After seeing the pregnancy report, Leanna found that the years of deceiving herself had come back to haunt her. Those memories washed over her as if they were telling her something. Leanna, don't you think that this woman in front of you is shameless and disgusting? But wait. Didn't you get married to Aiden by using the same method? A child for a marriage in return. You made him feel disgusted too. Now, it was just another person using her methods. However, Zoe was livid upon hearing this. How are these two matters the same? When you were married to Aiden, he was still single back then. On the other hand, Mia knew about the two of you, yet she chose to do this. She's just a shameless hussy. Whatever. It all doesn't matter anyway, Liana concluded. Actually, I haven't had a good night's sleep in the three years I've been married to him. No matter how you spin it, he was indeed forced to marry me back then. It's quite nice now that we're divorced as I don't owe him anything. After insulting both Mia and Aiden for half an hour, Zoe finally brought the sleepy Liana to the bedroom. You can stay here, for now, since my boyfriend isn't around anyway. I'm actually kind of scared to live in such a huge house alone. A yawning, Liana nodded. Good night. The next afternoon, the divorce agreement appeared on Aiden's office table. With Liana's signature at the bottom of the paper, it felt like a protest remark at him. Jonathan Stoll looked at his employer's stern expression before he stepped up and said, President Pearson, I've just confirmed with the personnel at Castor Villa, they mentioned that the madam moved out yesterday night. Besides her personal belongings, she didn't take anything else. Closing the divorce documents, Aiden threw it to one side. Moving out without taking a single thing? Tell me, what game do you think she's playing at this time? Yet, Jonathan did not respond to him. It's not like she's my wife. How would I know anything about that? Since he did not expect to hear anything constructive from Jonathan, he faintly instructed, You can leave now. After taking two steps forward, Jonathan turned back and informed, President Pearson, the custom necklace from Eras has arrived. Do you still? This necklace was supposed to be a gift from Aiden to Liana for their third anniversary. Clearly, it looked like they would not be needing it anymore. Dump it. There were no emotions found in those words. Jonathan replied, understood. After he exited the room, Aiden picked up the divorce agreement again and looked at the signature, before sneering Coldy, a woman who would sacrifice herself just to play out a perfect ploy to trap me into saving her, and forcing me to marry her because of a child. How could a person as evil and calculative as her ever have a turn of heart? She must have had a new intention, a new goal per se. Not hesitating to crush the document into a bundle, he promptly threw it into the trash can. On the other hand, Liana, who had been waiting at home for a few days now, did not receive any reply from Aiden as her message was left unseen. On the first day, she wrote, Did you receive the divorce documents? I've already signed it. Please tell me when you have the time so that we can go to the Civil Bureau Affairs to officiate it. Okay? The text was polite and caring. On the second day came another message. Hello. Did you see my message? Is there anything you're unhappy about the divorce terms? The words were bolder as it prodded at his reaction. On the third day. President Pearson, I know you're a busy man but could you please take some time out to go through this divorce with me? Liana still chose to maintain her patience. On the fourth day. Aiden Pearson, can you not drag this on any longer than it needs to? If you really hate my guts that much, then just get on with this, and I promise you that we'll never see each other again. Thank you. If I can't bear it any more, then I simply don't have to. On the fifth day. You have been temporarily blocked by this user. Please try again later. Humph, be asterisk starred. Placing her phone down, Liana immediately stood up and decided to head to Pathian Club. However, it seemed that she was out of luck as she failed to bump into Aiden. 
Instead, she bumped into his soon-to-be wife. Mia, who was originally here to eat with her friends, arrived at the entrance only to see Liana standing there. With a sneer laugh, she walked over in her heels and mocked, Oh, no. Don't tell me you're still not over Aiden and are here to search for him? Liana glanced at her without saying a word. Yet, her subdued attitude only made Mia bolder. How can you be this shameless? I already told you I'm pregnant, but you're still clinging on to the position of Mrs. Pearson. Chapter 3 All to Marry into the Pearson Family Oh, really? Well, perhaps I am. But I will never be as shameless as a hussy who's a homewrecker. Only a few seconds later, did Mia finally react to Liana's calm clap back. With an awful expression, she raised her hand and intended on striking Liana. Yet, Liana grabbed onto her wrist and gave her a tight slap in return. The only reason why I kept my composure last time was because of Aiden's child that you've successfully carried. That's on you, and I give you credit for that. But, that doesn't mean you get to brag about it in my face all the darn time. What, you think that being a mistress should be something to be proud of now? At that moment, the slap had gathered the attention of the bystanders. Embarrassed yet still angry, Mia wanted to withdraw her hand from Liana, but she could not seem to overpower her. Out of helplessness, she shouted in fury, How dare you slander me like this? I'm not some mistress. You're the one who's been hogging the status of being his wife. Do you know how much Aiden hates you? Don't you think your words lack a little sense? Regardless whether I'm hogging the status or not, I am still Aiden's legal wife. On that topic, I do have to thank you though, seeing how the baby in your womb is a perfect proof of his infidelity. Do you want to wager if I can win the lawsuit? I can even make him go bankrupt if you're interested in playing this game. In utter disbelief, Mia stared back at her. You wouldn't, duh. Oh, I would. Although it was at the height of summer, the masculine voice that suddenly came from behind Liana sent shivers down her spine, making her feel like it was winter instead. The stunned Liana then let go of Mia's hand. Mia, who immediately ran to Aiden's side, held her cheek that was still hot from the slap as tears were streaming down her pitiful face. After taking a look at her, Aiden directed his gaze toward Liana. With a cold piercing stare, he uttered emotionlessly, Do you need my help to introduce a lawyer to you? Smirking in response, she replied, I don't think so. Are you kidding me? Where do I have the money to afford this lawsuit that will not only waste my time, but also my strength? All she wanted was to scare me a bit. Taking a step toward her, he lowered his head slightly and whispered, So, this is what you meant in the divorce agreement? By leaving this marriage without a single penny? Liana looked up only to see the undisguised mockery in his gaze, which instantly made her understand his words. That's not it. I, she tried to rebuke before getting interrupted. Now that money can't satisfy you anymore, what you want is the entire Pearson group, right? Aiden continued without waiting for her to reply, otherwise, why would you go through all the trouble with this so-called divorce? Why else, but to favor you two lowlifes? Liana, aren't you overestimating yourself? If I was to sign the agreement, you would only stand to lose. Please, just be like a man. Give me the release I need and not just empty promises. She then met his mocking gaze and smiled. Then, I would like you to quickly sign it, President Pearson. I'll see you at the Civil Affairs Bureau. Aiden rebuked coldly, what are you going to do after I sign it? Are you going to sue me using the divorce agreement as evidence? While maintaining her smile, Liana explained, I think you're overthinking this yourself, President Pearson. Can't we just stop tormenting each other at this point? If you really feel uneasy about this, I can draft a guarantee that states that I won't be asking even a penny from you under any clause or aim. I'll even stamp it with my thumbprint and sign my full signature. Such a legal document should satisfy you, no? Surprised by her eagerness to draw lines with him, Aiden felt like she was in a rush to get away from him. As such, his brow slightly furrowed and his lips pursed in silence. Seeing how long they had been arguing, Mia went up to him and intercepted, President Pearson, let's go. I'm feeling a bit sick. 
At last, Liana took a glance at Mia and reminded her, Miss Clark, I suggest you lose the high heels, lighten your sultry makeup and go easy on your perfume before these lustful, lowly men end up messing you and your baby up. Aiden did not react to this. Who is she really talking about? With that, Liana retrieved her gaze at them and walked away in style. The moment she left, Mia's friends, who were all watching this from the sidelines, came up to flatter them. Mia, President Pearson is so protective of you. It was so satisfying to see that woman's expression. I agree. President Pearson is so cool. I really envy you, seeing how you have a boyfriend that is so willing to stand up for you. In my opinion, Mia's right. That woman really is shameless. You're already pregnant now, yet she still doesn't want a divorce. To this, Aiden only gazed at the people in front of him and asked, Say, are you all in your right minds? No matter how much he detested Liana, he would not create such a scandal like cheating. This made everyone present, including Mia shocked, as they did not know how they offended him. He then continued, about the pregnancy thing. Explain. His words were directed at Mia. She gripped her skirt tightly, before stuttering, I, I, I kept hearing that you hated that woman, SSOI. I found an excuse and wanted her to divorce. As he cut her off, all that was left on Aiden's expression was coldness. I'm not clueless as to what you're trying to do. It's enough that I already had Liana forcing me into a marriage with the exact tactic. If I hear another word of this floating around, you will bear the consequences. Mia bit her lips without finding the courage to speak. It was not until Aiden left that her friend breathed a sigh of relief before asking her, Mia, isn't President Pearson your boyfriend? Why did he talk like that to you? Mia was ghastly pale at this point. During this period, he did attend numerous banquets with her in tow, so there were a lot of rumors surrounding their relationship. Naturally, this led her to assume that she was his woman. That was precisely why she approached Liana and wanted her to divorce Aiden, by faking a pregnancy report. However, after hearing his words. On the same night, Mia finally managed to catch wind of Aiden and Liana's marriage. Apparently, Liana's father was hugely indebted to the loan shark, so she was sold to the Pathian Club by the debtors. After she escaped, she ran into Aiden and begged him to save her. However, the unthinkable happened when two months after the event, Liana knocked on his door with a pregnancy report in hand. Since the Pearsons were a renowned family and cared highly about their reputations, they did not want to smear dirt onto their name by making a fuss out of this. On top of that, she was already pregnant, so they eventually let Aiden marry Liana. Strangely, the baby in her womb was suddenly gone in less than two months of their marriage. From the start till end, it all had been an act played by Liana. From getting drugged in the club, meeting Aiden and forcing a marriage by a fake pregnancy, Chapter 4 Aiden does not like his wife. The Pearsons, who disliked Liana from the beginning, came to detest her even further after the fake pregnancy came to light. Due to that, they had been treating Liana as if she did not exist. No wonder Aiden was so angry. It turns out that I touched on the wrong subject. After heading back, Liana waited another few days for Aiden's response. Yet, there was still no news from him. Their brief meeting at Pathian Club that night made her suspect the reason why he was so desperately dragging this on. It was clearly to spite her so that she would be recognized as someone's wife who was being cheated on. Is he using this to take revenge against what I did to him in the past? Even though he was willing to drag this out, she was not. She only planned on taking action for her future after settling the matters of the divorce. Still, she had to live her own life instead of sitting around like this. After hearing that Liana was seeking a job, Zoe put down the bag of chips in her hands and said excitedly, Come work for our magazine. I heard that they are searching for a designer in hopes of establishing a brand. Despite being hyped up by her friend, Liana frowned upon hearing it. Can I, even do it? I haven't published anything in three years. Sweetie, you can do it. Besides, you can always try. It's not like you have anything to lose. 
Thinking that her words made sense, Liana nodded. Okay. Due to Zoe being the type to immediately act on what she said, she brought Liana's work from three years ago to the editor-in-chief's office the next day. After looking through everything, Harvey Mancini, the head editor, saw the signature in the design and stated, MCK's your friend? Yes. She's super capable and her designs are all very unique. We'll only stand to lose if we do not sign her. Of course, Harvey knew how capable she was. MCK's appearance in the field of jewelry design resembled a rose bloom which appeared for a fleeting moment before disappearing. Some said that she lost her inspiration after getting the award, so she stopped producing any more designs. Some also said that a wealthy individual fancied her, so she married into money and lived a quiet life ever since. All in all, there were all sorts of rumors floating around. However, he did not expect that after three years, she would return just as everybody was about to forget her existence. With that, Harvey asked, Is she free tonight? Let's discuss this over dinner. Knowing well that this was already a done deal, Zoe nodded instantly. She is. I'll tell her right now. At dinner, Liana and Harvey were getting along fairly well, even though she kept emphasizing the fact that she had not drawn anything these three years, he stated that he did not bother him as he only wanted her to create a rough sketch based on a specific style within the week. If the big boss approved of the idea, then they would proceed with signing the contract. The night was no longer young after they had finished their meal, so Harvey offered his kindness. It isn't easy to hail a cab around these areas. Just to be safe, I should send you two back. Sure, I'll go to the toilet first. Zoe looked at Liana. Nana, do you need to use the toilet too? Let's go. Out of courtesy, Zoe responded, Please wait for us for a bit, Mr. Mancini. We'll be back soon. The smiling Harvey replied, It's okay. Take your time. After exiting the stall, Zoe washed her hands while saying, This is great. We've succeeded. Liana, who did not think that things would progress so smoothly, was still a bit uneasy. I'm just worried that the design I come up with might not meet your boss standard. If that happens, I would be so sorry to you and Mr. Mancini. To this, Zoe only replied, You're thinking too much, sweetie. Our boss is a happy-go-lucky old man. He's very sweet and doesn't really manage anything. So, Mr. Mancini basically calls the shots in our magazine. Just treat it as a formality. Since Mr. Mancini values you so much, it's almost a done deal. Just as she was finished, the sound of high heels came from the toilet's entrance. The next moment, Mia appeared in front of them. As both parties did not expect to meet each other here, they were all stunned as Mia snorted afterward. What a leech, following us wherever we go. While using a tissue to dry her hands, Liana retorted nonchalantly, If you're looking for a beating, just say it. You don't have to say things like this. You. Since the last incident, Mia knew that she would not win against Liana when it came to a fight. Besides, there were two of them now, so her chances of winning were minimized. Zoe added, What were you going to say? Do you want me to promote what a mistress looks like over here with a megaphone? A sneering Mia rebuked, Liana, aren't you shameless? Have you forgotten about how you got married to Aiden in the first place? Calling me a mistress? I don't see how you're much better than me. What, you really think that after you've moved up in society, you can be a righteous b asterisk tch? However, just as Zoe was about to snap back, Liana held her back. Looking at Mia calmly, Liana asked, Did Aiden tell you this? Since Mia was not the sharpest tool in the shed, Liana concluded that she only knew of this recently as Mia did not utilize this as her weapon during their last two meetings, not to mention how smug she was looking compared to before. That's right. He said that he loathed women like you and that it was his biggest regret meeting you at the club. You're just like dog sh asterisk t. After washing it away, you would still stink of it. I would rather scrub my skin off if I came into contact with you. After her round of dissing battle, Mia only felt fear as she noticed that Liana was emotionless. 
With that, Mia took a step back to prevent another slap on her face again. To her surprise, all Liana did was throw the used tissue in the trash can and exited the toilet, no longer having any intention to interact with her at all. Seeing this, Zoe followed her. Nana, don't mind what that woman said. That shameless couple, they both deserve to rot. Just think of her words as dog barks, or farts. Promise me you won't be mad. Before she could finish her sentence, she saw the shameless man standing not far away from them while he was chatting with someone. Liana, who treated him invisibly, did not even spare him a glance and walked away briskly. Oscar Woodley felt a sense of bloodlust behind his back and turned around only to see the approaching woman before questioning, isn't that your wife? What's she doing here? Looking at who Oscar was referring to, Aiden frowned as a speck of impatience flashed across his eyes. She even followed me here, yet she's still talking about a simple divorce? When has this woman sunk deeper? Seeing that she was approaching them, Aiden was just about to speak before Liana passed them without any signs of stopping or even a glance at him. She emotionlessly brushed past him like a gust of wind. Naturally, he was caught speechless at that sight. On the contrary, it was Zoe, who was following Liana, that stopped and opened her mouth. At that moment, she was about to tell him off, but sensing that it might not be the best time, she chased after her friend again. As the whole situation was witnessed by Oscar, he could only laugh somewhat awkwardly. Did I recognize the wrong person? Aiden did not like his wife. Chapter 5 I Beg You Please, Save Me this was why Aiden basically never went out with her in tow. Even Oscar had only seen Liana twice. Once because Aiden had forgotten to bring a document and Liana, who was afraid that it might affect his work, delivered it to his office for him. Although Aiden treated her very coldly in return and she was disappointed, she did not whine about it. She certainly looked very obedient and sensible. The second time was at the birthday banquet of old master Pearson, Gordon. It also happened to be the second year of Liana and Aiden's marriage. At the same time, it was evident that everyone from the Pearsons did not treat her kindly as nobody bothered to introduce her to anyone. That night, Liana was no different to a servant of the Pearson family. Even though she ran around busily, no one praised her for it. On the contrary, they all found her irritating and meddlesome. After that, she stood in a corner while facing everybody's mockery. Despite that, she did not rebuke as she only lowered her head and stayed further away from the event. In Oscar's recollection, Aiden's wife was someone whom anyone could pick on as she did not retort even after being bullied. The fierce-looking woman tonight cannot be her. A speechless Aiden was still looking into the direction that Liana had gone to. With a few coughs, Oscar changed the subject. I bumped into Harvey at the entrance. Aiden asked, Who? the head editor of Lux Jewelry. I think I might know him. Since the Pearson Group had worked with Lux Jewelry a few times prior, Aiden was acquainted with their head editor. Oscar continued, Harvey told me earlier that they found MCK. If everything goes well, she'll become the designer of their magazine. You remember who MCK is, right? I don't. Why should I have to remember people I have nothing to do with? With that, he explained it to Aiden, then, you should at least remember about the seventh emerging designer competition you sponsored three years ago, right? It was MCK who came first place that year. Originally, she would have been sponsored by your company to further her studies in Eras. But for some unknown reason, she gave up on the opportunity. I heard that she found the person in charge of the competition and asked if they could give her cash in lieu of the sponsorship. However, you rejected it after the person in charge inquired about it to you. She vanished after that. Too bad, she really was a talented designer. Slowly focusing his gaze back at Oscar, Aiden was thinking about something else and did not hear a word that was said. Oh. Can't recall. On the lady's way back, Harvey could obviously feel Liana's mood had soured after the dinner. Since it would be awkward to ask her outright. He raised his eyebrows at Zoe instead to do the questioning. Yet, she lightly shook her head, signaling that it was hard to explain. 
The car was parked at the entrance of Zoe's apartment block before Harvey gushed, Miss McKinney, I'm looking forward to what you'll come up with and I hope we can achieve a fruitful collaboration. Liana, who had somewhat calmed down, composed herself and nodded. Thanks, Mr. Mancini. I'll work hard for it. The smiling editor concluded, I won't take up any more of your time then. Get going. I'll see you guys around. When they arrived home, Zoe initiated the topic. Nana, are you angry over those two? A bit dazed, Liana reacted only after a few seconds. I'm not. I was thinking about the design. The theme Harvey gave her this time was first love. Zoe told her that this was the first series their magazine would push after they signed their first designer as they were aiming to break through the youth market. Therefore, the product this time was very pivotal to them. Still, first love was something that had become very alien to Liana. The blissfulness that came along when spending time with the one you adored had disappeared in the three years of her marriage. Speaking of this, I wanted to ask you this. Hasn't Zane contacted you at all? Zoe said. In response, Liana shook her head. Three years ago, she had gotten the chance to further her studies in Eras when she won first place in the competition, however, she rejected it. Back then, Zane Barnett visited her a few times to ask her reasons for refusing. In his expression was doubt, loneliness, and also disappointment. Even so, she did not have the guts to tell him the truth even until the end and went as far as to delete his contact. What could she have said? Could I have told him that on the night of winning first place in the competition, just as I was immersed in joy, I would receive the news that my father, Jethro, had owed the loan sharks one million? Even till now, she found it hard to get over that shock. Sighing, Zoe lay against the couch. I still think that it was a pity between you and Zane. Back then, you two were supposed to be the perfect pair, even the blind could see that both of you liked each other. You were so close to being with him. I thought that you two would be together after going to Eris. Who knew that kind of thing would happen? Sigh. Fate really does work in mysterious ways. It was only after a while, did Liana respond, it's all in the past now. Hey, let's change the subject. Oh right, you wanna know gossip concerning Mia? Let me tell you, when she first entered the industry for a magazine shoot, she didn't even know what a fill light was, so she actually... That evening, Zoe spent the first half of the night making her best friend laugh with jokes and exaggeration before proceeding to curse at the shameless couple for the rest of the night. However, when Liana lay on bed, her mind was repeating the words that Mia had said to her in the toilet. As much as she knew that those ugly and undignified words would never come out of Aiden's mouth, she admitted that his description of her would not be too far off. Knowing that it was her who dragged Aiden down, she had tried her best to be the perfect wife during their marriage, regardless of the insults or mockery from the Pearsons that were hurled at her, never had she once complained about it. She also knew how much he hated her. Despite her tough front, she still felt pain after being on the receiving end of countless vicious comments and insults. That night, Liana curled up in her blanket and recalled something in a drowsy state. Three years ago, after knowing that Jethro had a debt of one million, she tried to get money in any way she could, going so far as to let down her pride and ask the person in charge of the competition to see if she could exchange the chance of going to Eris with cash. Even till now, she remembered clearly what the person told her. I'm sorry, Miss MCK, but our boss has said that the chance is given to people who really have a passion for design and not someone who seeks monetary gain. After hearing this, she was stunned for so long before cursing the so-called boss the entire night while crying at home. Who are they looking down at? Who doesn't have a pure and simple dream? With Jethro's disappearance, the debtors came knocking on their door a few days later, forcing a choice against Liana. It was either they slice one of her brother's hands or she went with them willingly. Left with no choice, Liana followed the debtors silently while ignoring Louis no matter how hard he screamed for her. The debtors sold her to the Pathian Club, a place where the wealthy went. It was a destination where pleasure, debauchery, and thrill met. One night, her drink was spiked. 
Although she was mentally prepared for this, the moment a fat middle-aged man entered the room, she suddenly thought of Zane and their promise to meet at Eris, a promise that never came true. Mustering her strength she never knew she had, Liana pushed the man aside and stumbled out the room. Promptly, there were a bunch of people chasing after her. After escaping and running for an unknown amount of time, she finally saw a blurry figure before her eyes. Crashing onto the ground, she tugged on his expensive feeling suit pants. Chapter 6 Let's Divorce, I Don't Want Anything Else Having said that, she lost consciousness. Once she opened her eyes, she found herself in an unfamiliar room with a man lying next to her. The scattered clothes were enough to tell what had happened last night. Feeling her parching throat, she quelled the sorrow by comforting herself. At least this man is a thousand times better than that swine. Recalling the incident that had transpired last night, Liana was worried about Louis. She hastily wore her clothes to take her leave first. Just as she was about to depart, the man on the bed suddenly frowned due to the noise. Covering the blanket atop him, she patted the fabric lightly and cooed, shoo. It's all right. Just go to sleep. After lulling him to sleep as if he was a child, she made herself scarce. It was fortunate that the house was empty when the creditor had found their way to their doorstep. Louis was not home at that time as he went out to search for her. Liana gave him a call to assure him about her safety as well as to inform him to stay at his friend's place for the time being. Since it was best for them to stay under the radar for now, she had gone to Zoe's place as well. After hiding for two months, Liana found out that she was pregnant. It was four o'clock a.m. when Liana woke up. After drinking a glass of water, she began binge-watching the latest dramas and movies regarding first love in the living room, attempting to reacquaint herself with the feeling of the first dawn of love that had struck upon her. On the third day of cooping in her room, an inspiration fleeted across her mind. Before she could even start drawing it, her phone rang. It was an unknown number. She laid down the pencil and answered the call. Hello. Who is this? The unknown person took a long pause. Madam, I'm Jonathan Stoll, President Pearson's secretary. He will be going on a business trip to Arkenland. Do you know where his blue striped shirt is? Liana was vexed to have someone interrupt her at such a lightbulb moment, let alone for this kind of trivial matter. Suspecting that Aiden was doing it on purpose, she snapped, Is he crazy? We're already divorced, so what does it have to do with me? Ask the nanny. With that being said, she terminated the call without a second thought. Yet, her phone rang again after a couple of minutes. Looking at the name Aiden on the screen, she pondered momentarily before answering the phone. Leanna McKinney, get back here in half an hour. I, he ended the call, before she could even finish her words. Holding the phone, Liana was cursing him in her head out of rage. She then took a deep breath to regain her composure before leaving the room. Zoe saw her and asked, Liana, where are you going at this hour? It's already late, I'm going to strangle that be asterisk starred. Liana's impulsive comment rendered Zoe speechless. Nevertheless, it was nothing more than empty words. Liana knew that she stood no chance against Aiden. By the time she arrived at Castor Villa, the place was engulfed by silence as the maids had gone to rest. She headed straight to the bedroom upstairs, only to see Aiden sitting on the couch in his casual clothes while leafing through some documents. Even if he had heard the footsteps, he did not spare her a single glance. Liana entered the cloakroom and rummaged through the wardrobe before she managed to find the shirt that Jonathan had previously mentioned. Gazing at the shirt, she was stunned. It was for the reason that it was the very piece which she had specially bought for Aiden before he went on a business trip to Alki in the first year of their marriage. It was perfect for beachwear, but he merely gave her a cold look when she gave it to him. Don't try to butter me up with this kind of lowly method. I can see through your schemes easily, although Liana herself was oblivious of her so-called schemes, that was the last day she had ever bought anything for him. Still, why is he calling me back to search for the thing that he has once abandoned? What else can it be other than to take revenge and pick on me? She left the cloakroom and placed the shirt on the bed. 
Right when she wanted to speak to him, she realized that he had been on the phone all the while. His voice was so calm while he completely ignored her presence as if he was alone in the room. At first, she intended to bring up the divorce to him, however, she ended up leaving instead, considering that it was not the right time to do so. Akin to how she came in a hurry, she left without any hesitation. It was not until Liana had left the room that Aiden finally lifted his head to look at her back figure. Since he did not expect her to leave that soon, he said on the phone, hmm all right. I'll hang up for now. When she reached the living room, he called out for her from the staircase while looking at her with an indifferent look. Have you found the shirt? It's on your bed. What about the other? Liana did not understand. What do you mean? He frowned in displeasure. I'm going for a week. Do you think that piece of shirt is enough? Words failed her as she recalled the past. She was in charge of packing his luggage for his upcoming business trips when she used to stay at Castor Villa. Never in her wildest dream would she imagine that her dutiful side had done nothing good other than indulging his cocky behavior. Still, Liana tried to talk to him with equanimity. President Pearson, I mean, Mr. Pearson, allow me to repeat this once more. We're divorced, so, I'm not obliged to look for your clothes or pack the luggage for you. Please ask your maids or your future wife to do so, and do not summon me for these matters. Thank you. Iden's face remained pallid as he descended the stairs to stand before her. Allow me to remind you about this as well, that we haven't signed the papers yet. So, you're the only one who can do this as my legal wife. Liana bit her lips. Is that final? Don't make me repeat myself twice. She pursed her lips and took out her phone. Fine. Since you like ordering people so much, I'll call Mia over to pack your things. She'll be rushing all her way here, for sure. Before she could even dial the number, Aiden snatched her phone as his face darkened. Leanna McKinney, you've taken too much liberty from me. Looking at her empty hand, she sniggered. Watch your words, President Pearson. I have no right to do that to you. The glint in his eyes simmered. Stop fooling around, McKinney. Quit testing my patience and just tell me what you want. Leanna paused after hearing that before continuing. President Pearson, I believe I've told you that I want the Pearson Group. Are you going to give me that? Impossible. Let's divorce, then. I don't want anything else. Frowning in agitation, Aiden dealt his hand into his pocket. I'm starting to get annoyed at your constant use of the D-word. He was a hard nut to crack for her, ever since the beginning, he was the one always trying to get rid of her. Chapter 7 I'll take care of you in the future. I know you have suspicion that I'm up to something, but as I've mentioned previously, I'm willing to write a covenant. You can even hire a lawyer and cameraman to witness and record the entire process when we sign the divorce paper. That will be enough to prove that I'm the one who's asking for it without demanding a single penny from you. Liana's determined stance quelled Aiden as he pursed his lips into a thin line. Or, are you afraid that I'll bring up the divorce to ruin your family's name? You can put your worries to a rest, because I, Leanna McKinney, promise that I will never take advantage of you on this matter. I'll be damned if I break my promise. A couple of minutes later, he finally responded, How am I supposed to believe in you? A vexed Leanna huffed, What do you want me to do then? Is it your wish to see your wife and mistress on good terms? Aiden Pearson, I'm telling you, I'd rather die than raise someone else's child. Aiden merely snorted at that. Without words, she knew well that he communicated contempt as he was certain that she was no less different from Mia, deeming her to be in no position to comment about others. When she was about to give her last-ditch effort, he piped up, I'm going on a business trip tomorrow. Let's talk after I'm back. Liana smiled instantly. That's not a problem. I'll wait, no matter how long it takes. Just inform me once you're back. As her attitude did a 180, his face dimmed before heading upstairs. What a shameless woman. Time flew as Liana sent the designs to Harvey just as when the one-week deadline was approaching. 
On the night of that very same day, he sent her a text that his boss had approved of it and she was required to come over tomorrow to sign the contract. While reading his message, she heaved a sigh of relief as she was afraid that her work would not meet their standard. This project of Lux Jewelry had been going on for a while now. Ever since they had decided to release their first collection, a designer was all that they needed. Now that Liana would be coming on board, they wished to see some advances in its progress because the company's anniversary was just one month ahead. In conjunction with the celebratory occasion, the magazine intended to hold a press conference to announce their brand to the press. Aside from Liana's necklace, the other mainstay products included the bracelet and ring. Once the drafts were approved by the magazine, they could proceed with the refinement prior to the production. Therefore, it would be hectic to finish everything within a month, they were left with not much time. In order to not ruin the press conference, Liana was always on her toes as she had been sketching at home, besides choosing the materials for the jewelry. She needed to make the final product herself before sending it to the factory for mass production after the press conference. Thus, she was so busy that she had forgotten about the divorce, let alone knowing of Aiden's return. Regardless of the circumstances, he did not contact her this whole time. Deciding to take some rest, Liana set down the pencil when her phone atop the table vibrated. Her brows knitted tightly the moment she realized that it was Jethro. She picked up the phone when he called for the second time. Liana, Lewis is going to sit for the SAT next year. We need some money for his tuition fees. How much is it? Let me recall the amount. The tuition fees are very expensive. Why don't you give me 30000 I'll save the balance for his next semester. Liana remained calm. First of all, Lewis will be taking the exam this year. Secondly, he's the top scholar in town, so he doesn't need tuition. Lastly, I've never heard of any tuition center that charges that much. As his schemes were seen through like a glass, Jethro was livid. Enough of the excuses. Can't you just give me the money? I'm broke. But you got your rich husband. Thirty thousand means nothing to him. There's no free lunch in this world. No matter how rich he is, it has nothing to do with me. Besides, we've signed the divorce papers, so I have no reason to ask him for money. What? He flipped out. Who said that you're allowed to divorce? Have you even discussed it with me? Even if you have divorced, he will give you half of his assets. There's no way that you have nothing. Leanna McKinney, are you going to let your father rot to death? Transfer me the money right this instant. Otherwise, you'll never get away with it. I have nothing. Not even a cent. Having said that, she ended the call right away. Soon, Lewis rang her. Did Jethro ask you for money? Don't give it to him matter what he says. He went to gamble again lately and ended up owing a few thousands. He's hiding somewhere at the moment. I know. I'm not planning to give him anything. On the day Liana paid off Jethro's hundreds of thousands worth of debt, she had mentioned that she would not give a fig about his matters anymore even if he was dead. Still, not everyone turned over a new leaf that easily. He had been trying to deceive her all these years by lying that he needed surgery for his broken leg or to settle a fight involving Lewis. Jethro knew her character well, even though she would ignore him, she would never ignore the issue when it came to Lewis. Consequently, the siblings had fallen for his ruse twice. Now that they had learned their lessons the hard way, they would not feel a thing in the face of his whining and tantrums. Have you thought of which university you want to go to? inquired Liana. Yeah. She paused a moment before adding, Lewis, do you want to study abroad? I still have enough money to pay for the tuition fees. You can also apply for scholarships. She wished she could send Lewis away from their toxic father, so that Lewis would not be stuck in the gutter like she was. No, I'm going to stay in the country. I'm not going anywhere, interrupted Lewis. Knowing his temper, she let out a silent sigh. You can pick wherever you want. Tell me when you need money. Save the money for yourself. I can earn it on my own. Lewis suddenly asked, Has he been nice to you? 
The conversation went silent for a while when Aiden was brought into the topic. Hmm yeah. Louis, I'm going to file a divorce. Liana smiled. Louis held his tongue for a moment as though the announcement was not a surprise to him. Okay. I'll take care of you in the future. She grinned. Why do I need that when I have hands and legs to fend for myself? Just focus on your studies. After hanging up the call, Liana went out of her room to see a pale Zoe slumping on the couch wearily. Zoe, what's wrong? Are you not feeling well? Zoe shook her head while wheezing, I'm on my menstruation. I'll be fine after taking some rest. Liana poured Zoe a glass of warm water. That won't do. I'll buy a hot water bottle and some painkillers downstairs. Would you like to have something to eat? At the mention of food, Zoe regained her energy and ordered something for herself. Liana, you're the best. Chapter 8 Be Like a Man Liana rose to her feet while smiling. Enjoy your movie. After buying the things needed from the drugstore downstairs, she went to the grocery store to purchase a few things that Zoe wanted. Looking at the sanitary pads on the rack, she suddenly recalled that it had been two months since she last had her menstruation. Ever since the miscarriage that happened three years ago, she had her menstruation every two or three months due to irregular menstruation. Assuming that her menstruation would come soon, she took a few packs of sanitary pads. Just as she was about to leave upon making the payment, a woman bumped into her at the entrance, causing Liana's stuff to scatter around the floor. The woman then dusted off her clothes in contempt. Watch where you're going. Liana lifted her head and gave the woman an indifferent look. Did you not learn how to walk like a human? The woman was none other than Anna Pearson, whose eyes were rife with disdain and arrogance toward Liana. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here at this hour? Are you meeting another man behind Iden's back? Liana could not care less about Anna as she began to gather the fallen paper bags. Anna Pearson, you should have stayed abroad. Don't you know that I hold grudges and will take revenge on others? When Anna heard that, her expression changed before taking a few steps back. What are you going to do? Liana arched her brow. Nothing in particular, but you better not get pregnant in this lifetime. Otherwise, you'll have to watch out all the time. Who knows? I might be in the mood to have some fun with you and approach you regardless of what it takes. Furthermore, as her voice trailed off, her ambiguous gaze scanned Anna from head to toe. Anna, who was not even pregnant, quailed at Liana's gaze. You must be out of your mind. You're the only one who knows whether you're pregnant. Don't even think about putting the blame on me just because I bumped into you. Besides, my family won't let you off the hook if you lay a finger on me. I, I am sure that Aiden will file a divorce and drive you out of the house. You won't get anything you want. Try me. I have nothing to lose anyway, crazy woman. Anna then strode away with guilty and nervous steps before heading toward a Land Rover outside of the grocery store. Noticing her pale complexion, the man next to her asked, I thought you're going to buy some water? As though she had been waiting for that very question, she grumbled, Zane, do you still remember the woman who faked her pregnancy to force a marriage with Aiden? I ran into her by chance. It must be my bad day. However, he merely responded, if you're not going to buy anything, then let's go. Zane, you, she stopped halfway when she noticed that he was staring at something outside their car. Following his gaze, she peered outside, but there was nothing. Before she could voice out her curiosity, he abruptly alighted from the car and dashed toward a direction. Anna followed suit and yanked Zane, who was searching for something amongst the crowd. Zane, what's wrong? Are you searching for something? Nothing. I must be mistaken. Zane gathered himself as he dropped his gaze onto the ground. The silhouette was similar to the one he had been missing this whole time. Let's go, then, she suggested. At that moment, he removed her hand from his. Anna, I'll call a cab for you. I have something urgent to do. I'll send you home next time. But you've clearly promised. Unfazed by her pestering, he took out his phone and called for a cab. 
I've sent the license plate to you. Bye. At last, he left the scene, leaving Anna behind as she yelled for his name. Liana arranged the groceries into the fridge before handing the hot water bottle to Zoe, who was quite frankly suffering from the menstruation cramp. She took it over and brandished her phone at Liana, seeming all excited with those bright eyes. Guess who just messaged me? Zac Efron? Harry Styles? I'm being serious right now. She showed Liana the screen to reveal the messages received. I'm Zane Barnett. Do you have any news about Liana? Liana stared at the messages until the screen turned black. After a while, Zoe broke the silence. Zane is back in the country and he's searching for you everywhere. I'm not sure who gave him my contact number, though. Should I tell him that we're living together at the moment? Or should I consign you to him? Liana shook her head instinctively. No. Not right now. Knowing what her friend was concerned about, Zoe did not push her further and sighed. In the end, Zoe covered for Liana. It's been a long time since I last met her, but I'll inform you once I hear of her news. On the other side, Zane ended the conversation with a thanks. No one had a clue whether he bought her lies or not. Lying on the bed, Liana did not catch a wink as her mind was a mess. It was not until the sky lit up that she finally closed her eyes. Still, her peaceful sleep did not last long when her phone vibrated nonstop. Her hands fumbled around before picking up the phone. A man's voice resounded from the other side of the line. Madam, there's an issue in the company. I think it's best if you stop by for a moment. He continued, yet she did not catch a single word clearly. The grogginess faded only after ten minutes upon hanging up the phone. Company? What company? Checking her phone once again, Liana realized that it was a call from Jonathan, Iden's secretary. Her fingers raked through her hair as she got up to have a shower before taking a cab to Pearson Group. It was 12.10 p.m. when she arrived at her destination, which was filled with passersby due to lunchtime. The busybody onlookers were watching something at the entrance of the building. Don't you dare touch me. I'm the father-in-law of your president. You'll be fired with one word from me. Tell Aiden Pearson that he has to at least give us half of his assets even if it's a divorce. My daughter has been married to him for three years and sleeps on the same bed every day. Yet, he's not giving us any money? He should at least act like a man. Meanwhile, Liana happened to hear the last sentence upon arriving. Color drained from her face as a huge wave of embarrassment swept over her. She desperately wished the floor would open up to swallow her. Right when she was about to take her leave, Jonathan appeared next to her out of nowhere and whispered, Madam, your father has been causing a ruckus for the past thirty minutes. It's doing damage to the company. President Pearson hope that you can settle it within three minutes or else. Chapter 9 I'm Pregnant Liana raised her head to look at the building. Although she could not see through the glass wall, she was able to feel the piercing gaze upon her which sent cold chills to her spine. Due to the unforeseen commotion, she bet that Aiden was resenting her more and even had the heart to kill her once and for all. She squeezed herself through the jostling throng to see her father under the security guard's assistance. Fatigue swarmed her almost instantly at the sight of him rolling and tossing on the ground like a kid throwing a tantrum. What exactly do you think you're doing? Jethro dusted his clothes as soon as he saw his daughter. You've come just at the right time. Call Aiden right now to discuss the property division. I clearly told you that his money has nothing to do with me. He raised his voice after hearing that. Nonsense. He has slept with you for the past three years, so how can we let him go, just like that, when he has a mistress? Stop joking around with me. Liana parted her lips, but nothing was uttered as she had nothing to say to him. She nonchalantly turned toward Jonathan, please call the police. Jonathan nodded under her behest and she was going to leave until Jethro thwarted her. How can you leave like this? I'm doing this for you. I'll take a part of the money and you can have the others. Yet, this is how you're repaying me? Insolent brat. She pushed him arm away from hers. 
You know Lusaka you're doing this for. If you're not going to leave, suit yourself then. I can enjoy two days peacefully if you're taken into custody anyway. Oh, right. Neither I nor Lewis will bail you out this time, so you can stay in the police station for good. They'll provide meals and you won't be chased by the creditors. Amazing, isn't it? Furious, Jethro slapped her in the face and glared at her. Is this how you talk to your father? I brought up both of you for so many years and this is how you're treating me. You must be looking down on me after marrying a rich man. Whatever. Given that the crowd was turning into a mob, Liana had no intention of staying any longer as she lowered her head and withdrew herself from the people. Now that Aiden was not to be moved and Liana had gone without a care for him, Jethro was aware that he would be in real trouble once the police came. He glowered at the security guards. Tell your president that I'll be back in a few days. The crowd dispersed the moment Liana left. Jonathan entered the building and marched toward the man, who was standing before the French window. President Pearson, Mr. McKinney, is gone. Aiden thrusted his hand into his pocket while holding his phone with the other one, exuding an aloof and cold disposition. What about Liana? She's gone too. Aiden snorted. Gone? Yes, and she was slapped in the face. Aiden interrupted his secretary before he could finish. Adjourn the afternoon meeting to tomorrow. Understood, Jonathan responded. An expressionless Aiden unlocked his phone screen before texting Liana. 3 o'clock p.m. at the Civil Affairs Bureau. He received a reply only after 10 minutes. Okay, sitting on the bench by the street, Liana kept her phone in the bag after replying to Aiden's message. She then hugged her legs and buried her head into her knees. If only I could go somewhere where no one knows who I am. That way, I can start afresh. No Jethro, no Aiden, and no embarrassing insults. After a long while, she wiped off the tears on her face and intended to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau to wait for Aiden. However, the second she rose to her feet, everything was turning upside down before her eyes, and soon she fainted. The next time Liana opened her eyes, the smell of infectants wafted through her nose, telling her that she was at the hospital. She needed her head while checking on the time. Realizing that it was already 4.30 p.m., she was rendered speechless. Great. I'm totally screwed. Just as she was going to contact Aiden to explain her circumstances, a smiling nurse pulled the curtain apart. You're awake. The doctor has done a checkup on you. You didn't have your breakfast earlier and you're currently low on sugar. It's nothing serious. You can take a rest before being discharged. Liana nodded. Thank you. Oh, you're pregnant too, but since your body is quite weak, you should be extra careful especially for the first three months. If you're free these two days, it is advised for you and your husband to come for a pregnancy checkup. The nurse broke the mind-blogging news and left. The first sentence put Liana into a trance, the shock and helplessness were no less better than the night she found out that Jethro had passed the buck of an enormous debt to her. It was as if someone had built up a towering wall in front of the exit when there was only one step left to take before breaking free from the darkness. No matter how much she tried, she could never surmount it. She got off the bed and went to the OBGYN, putting Aiden to the back of her mind. When the checkup had ended, the gynecologist said, You are pregnant for about 40 days. The baby is fine, but your body is quite weak for not resting well after a miscarriage. It's a miracle to see you pregnant right now. However, there's nothing to be nervous and anxious about. All you have to do is to recover your body. With blank eyes, Liana questioned, what if? I don't want the baby? Is it possible for me to have an abortion? The doctor was stunned for a moment, for it was not the reaction she had expected. It's possible, but I advise you to reconsider it. It's not easy for you to be pregnant due to your body condition. Thus, the abortion will inflict long-term damage to your body. You might not be able to. I might not be able to get pregnant in the future. You can, but it will be hard. It depends on how your body is. Liana lowered her head in silence. 
The doctor then suggested, please reconsider your decision. It's highly inadvisable to have a surgery right now due to your poor health anyway. If you've made up your mind, please come after two weeks. Okay, thank you. At the end of the day, Liana did not even know how she managed to leave the hospital in such a state of mind. The idea of telling Aiden flashed across her head, but she deemed it unnecessary. In addition to his abhorrence to the idea of pregnancy, he was still suspecting that she had ulterior motives for wanting a divorce. If she was going to level with him, it would only give him all the more reason for her crime. Furthermore, he would never welcome the baby as it would only fuel his resentment. Liana surfed the internet along her way home to realize that birth control was not a hundred percent safe. And who can I blame for this? When Zoe returned home at night, the house was dark. It was not until she turned on the lights did she notice that Liana was sitting on the couch like a stationary monument in a quail. Zoe seated herself next to Liana before waving her hand in front of her friend. Are you meditating? Liana slowly opened her eyes. With serenity, she dropped the bomb. Chapter 10, Throwing a Tantrum That's good news. You're pregnant, Zoe came to her senses as her eyes widened. Is it Iden's? Hmm. SH asterisk T. What are you going to do? Are you going to tell him about it? Liana shook her head. No. We're going to divorce anyway. Zoe paused for a moment before asking, then, are you going to keep the baby? Silence dawned upon both parties, for Liana did not know the answer to that question. When she found out about her pregnancy, her first reaction was resorting to abortion. However, after ruminating on it, she figured that the baby had nothing to do with the bad blood between her and Aiden, the baby was innocent. Every single time she closed her eyes, she could feel how that baby's life was dissipating from her body three years ago. She would not want to experience it twice, but if she ever decided to keep the child. In the end, she answered, I'm not sure yet. Let's talk about it after some time. Knowing that Liana did not wish to continue that topic, Zoe veered the subject. Right, there's good news. The necklace and ring of the First Love Collection have been receiving positive responses from our magazine team. There are internal reservations too. I'm sure that it'll sell like hot cakes once it's on sale. The only thing left is the bracelet. There's still one week left before the press conference. Do you think you can make it in time? Yeah. I need three days at most. Zoe heaved a sigh of relief. You're pregnant, though. Can you handle the production yourself? You'll be exposed to chemical substances in the process. I think it's best to hand it over to the factory. It's all right. I can wear a mask and gloves. Then, you gotta be careful. Just inform me if you can't handle it on your own. Liana smiled. Don't worry. There won't be any problem. Coming out of the bathroom, she held her phone in hesitation for a long time before dialing Aiden's number. Once the line got through, Mia's smug voice could be heard. President Pearson is with me right now, so try not to make a fool of yourself. Oh. Liana hung up the phone without a second thought. On the other end, Aiden came out of the restroom and happened to see Mia shoving his phone into his clothes. He strode over to take the clothes and questioned indifferently, did someone call? Her eyes wavered. And no. He checked the contact history, only to see the incoming call from Liana one minute ago. He lifted his gaze onto Mia, who explained, President Pearson, Liana asked for your whereabouts, but I covered for you since I know that you don't want to see her anyway. I didn't tell her anything else. He kept his phone while brushing off her silly ploy. At that moment, his business partner came over while beaming with delight. President Pearson, I'm glad that you're still here. I've booked a private room at Pathian Club. Let's enjoy ourselves for a while. Aiden replied, Miss Clark is the protagonist of the collaboration. Do enjoy yourselves without me. Mia called him instantly, President Pearson. After giving a polite nod to the business partner, he exited the place and hopped into the car. The driver inquired, President Pearson, 
Do you want to go to the apartment or Castor Villa? Aiden looked down at his phone and his calm voice sounded, to Castor Villa. Okay. He alighted from the car after the 30-minute ride when his phone suddenly rang, it was Liana. Although he had answered the call, she did not say a thing. Impatient, he undid his tie while sitting on the couch, before asking, what is it? At last, she questioned cautiously, are you, still busy? In fact, it took her a lot of courage to make this phone call. If she did not explain to Aiden about her situation, he might take the wrong idea that she was just goofing around, which would make it more difficult for her to have a divorce. Still, it felt nice to be able to get in the way of his affair with just one call. Busy with what? Liana remained silent for a while, before steering the topic. I'm sorry for today. Something urgent came up. It wasn't on purpose. Liana McKinney, I waited for an hour. His voice was frosty. I'm terribly sorry about it, but I really had something urgent to attend to. What about tomorrow? Any time works fine for me. Why don't I wait for you at the Civil Affairs Bureau early in the morning? You can stop by when you're free. I'm a busy man. I gotta go on a business trip to Gerland. She was disheartened by the news. Oh, then, let's talk after you're back. This was the downside of having a president as one's husband, one needed to book an appointment in order to sign the divorce papers. As the call had not ended yet, Aiden inquired, Do you want chocolate? Liana was taken aback by the sudden question. Hmm? He repeated himself impatiently, I'm going to Gerland. Do you want chocolate? She recalled that the business partner in Gerland had once gifted him a few boxes of their local chocolate specialties, which were simply placed on the desk by him in the end. Although he was not into sweets and snacks, she loved them. Thus, he supposed that it would be better to dispose of the chocolate by giving it to her, instead of throwing it into the trash bin. After a while, she responded, No, thanks. He snorted coldly before terminating the call. Just as Liana was about to sleep, Aiden rang her this time. Where's the aspirin? You'll find it in the kitchen. It's in the top drawer of the third cupboard, from the left. There's plenty of medicine in there. If you're not sure which it is. His breathing sounded calm, as though he was waiting for her to finish her words. You can wake one of the maids up. He ended the call at the very next second and she pouted her lips while putting her phone aside before flopping into bed. No wonder, he's unusually gentle today. He's been drinking. Alcohol never failed to make Aiden more patient and approachable. Whenever she was told off by him, she wished she could force him to gulp down a few bottles of alcohol before he stepped into the house. Of course, she had the heart but not the guts to do so. Rather than waking up the maids, Aiden kneaded his hurting temples and drank a glass of cold water before heading upstairs. When he entered the bedroom to grab some clothes, his eyes landed upon the ladies' apparels that were left untouched for a long time. It had been a month since Liana had moved out. This afternoon, he asked Jonathan at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau, other than money, why would a woman insist on a divorce? Recently, Aiden was indeed irritated by how things were turning out. Liana claimed that she did not want money, but purely a divorce, which was totally preposterous given how her father played havoc at the company. Even so, her attitude was firm, for she did not take advantage of him through the divorce. He could not understand the reasons behind her decision. President Pearson, is it possible that Madam is just throwing a tantrum with you? Jonathan voiced out his assumption after a long pause. Chapter 11 Zane has been searching for you. Exactly. Girls are more or less the same, they tend to keep it to themselves when they're angry sometimes, trying to attract the man's attention through other matters. Perhaps, Madam is waiting for you to comfort her by bringing up a divorce? Aiden sniggered upon hearing Jonathan's guess. In her dreams. She should know her place and get rid of such a ridiculous idea. Jonathan continued, President Pearson, I don't think that Madam is a money-minded person. When her father was making a fuss at the company, she said that your money has nothing to do with her. She even got slapped in the face. Iden's brows furrowed unconsciously. 
She's hurt? Yeah. It's quite serious. There's even a mark on her face. After a few seconds of contemplation, Aiden said, check how much his debt is. Give him the money and warn him to stay out of my sight from now on. Let's head back to the company. It was only 3.10 p.m. when he said that. Aiden stared at the blue striped shirt, which was hung at the most conspicuous spot in the bedroom. Vexed, he decided to throw both Liana and the shirt out of the house if she continued her act after he returned from Gerland. Time flew by in a blink of an eye. It was the day where the press conference of Lux Jewelry would be held. Liana was currently adjusting the length of the necklace around the model's collar backstage. Harvey came up to her at that moment. MCK, many renowned designers and big names are invited today. I'm sure that your work will take the center stage and many of them will know about you. She smiled. The honor belongs to Lux Jewelry. I'm just a nobody. It was her genuine opinion, for no one would spare their time just to see the work of a small fry if it was not for Lux Jewelry's influence. Zoe happened to walk by and overheard the conversation. Liana, be more confident with yourself. It is our honor, isn't it, Mr. Mancini? He nodded with a smile. You're right. It can't be done without everyone's contribution, anyway. Once he left the scene, Zoe pulled Liana's hand and said in undertone, Liana, I've something to tell you, but you mustn't freak out. What is it? I saw Zane, thud. The hair clip, which Liana was going to put on the model, fell onto the ground. Zoe quickly picked it up. Actually, he's been searching for you. Since it's your comeback in three years after winning the Emerging Designer Competition, Lux Jewelry has used it to draw the public attention. It's no wonder that he has found all his way here. It took Liana a while to gather her thoughts, but she did not know how to respond. Zoe patted her shoulder in comfort. There's nothing to worry about. Don't think too much about it. Just go with the flow. You're divorced anyway, so why not start your life anew? That's not it. I'm just thinking about the interview regarding first love. Dot. It was such a lovely yet sensitive word for anyone. She had agreed to an interview with the magazine team to discuss the inspiration of her designs as long as there would not be any questions pertaining to her or her first love. Any tactless question might cause the people involved unnecessary trouble. Forget about her marriage and divorce, it would be a big trouble if Zane had a girlfriend and she saw the interview. Zoe smacked her own head at the realization. Oh, you're right. I'll speak to the media, just in case. Don't worry, I got your back. In spite of that, Liana could not focus at all during the rest of the preparation. As Harvey had mentioned, there were a lot of well-known figures attending the press conference, including Oscar and Aiden, who was back from his Gerland business trip. Even Harvey was confused to see Aiden around. Why is he here? Oscar smiled while explaining the situation, Mr. Mancini, I heard that First Love is your main collection and that its designs were stunning. So, President Pearson is here to buy it for his wife. Harvey let out a wry smile forsaking the idea of telling the truth that none of the products displayed in the showcase were for sale. After all, there was no need to offend someone influential like Aiden. However, if Aiden insisted on purchasing it after the press conference, Harvey figured that he could try to persuade the designer. Please suit yourselves. The press conference is going to commence soon. Oscar nodded in return. Sure. Go ahead. Now that Harvey had gone off somewhere else, Oscar turned to Aiden. I thought you didn't like your wife. This series is called First Love. Aren't you afraid that she would misunderstand your intention? Aiden replied nonchalantly, that will only mean that she thinks too highly of herself. I just feel like buying it. Oscar was at a loss for words, for he was not buying it. If it's true, why did you come all the way here from the airport without heading home first? You can buy something else like a rocket if you're really in the mood of shopping. Just as he was going to retaliate, he noticed a familiar figure entering the entrance. Isn't that Anna? Since when did she return to the country? Aiden cast a glimpse on her before answering, I don't know. 
In contrast to Aiden's apathy, Oscar was quite interested in her, who was trailing closely behind a man like his shadow. The ever-arrogant and prideful woman was acting so obediently to please the man. Before long, she saw them too and yanked the man over to greet them. Aiden, Oscar, why are you guys here? I've got business to do here, replied the taciturn Aiden. Oscar was grinning. Anna, long time no see. Yeah. She linked arms with the man. Right, let me introduce him to you guys. He's Zane. I met him while studying abroad. Zane withdrew his arm from hers before stretching it out toward Oscar. Zane Barnett. Oscar naturally shook hands with him. Ah, uh, we've met before. Mr. Barnett said that you've been out of the country for the past three years. Have you just returned? Zane nodded before looking at Aiden. President Pearson, I heard so much about you. After Aiden shook his hand out of courtesy, Anna finally had the chance to join the conversation. So, you guys know each other. Zane. Suddenly, the lights were turned off when she was halfway through her words. The host announced, Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as the press conference will be starting soon. Noticing the empty seats in front of Aiden and Oscar, Anna pulled Zane. Zane, let's sit over there. However, his sole purpose of coming here was to find someone and hence the excuse. I've got something else to do, you can sit there by yourself. Chapter 12 She is expressing her love for me. The flustered Anna could not help but chase after him. Zane, please don't ignore me. I promise I won't bother you. Zane knitted his eyebrows as he started to feel a sense of helplessness, not knowing what to say. The entire scene was settled down at this point. Everyone was propped in their seats, so he had no choice but to remain seated and tolerate it for the rest of the night. That very sight was caught by Oscar and he clicked his tongue before sneering, I didn't expect Anna to have such a sweet side, but I've always wondered why she suddenly ran away without any notice and took so long to return. You have so many questions about her. Why don't you ask her personally? Aiden responded. I'm just wondering. I don't know. Aiden had no interest in her life at all as he happened to be on a business trip to Delshore when she left for abroad, both of them had not crossed each other's paths until now. Soon, the press conference had begun. The founder of Lux Jewelry took the stage first to explain the history of entrepreneurship, followed by Harvey who discussed the subsequent development strategy while stating that the first three models of the first love series were merely the beginning, hence, more styles and series would be launched in the future. After the speech was the long-awaited fashion show. Zane, this series looks so good. I want them all, Anna told her plus one. However, he paid no attention to her. He merely looked at the exhibits on the models and took a peek backstage several times. According to Lux Jewelry, the designer would make an appearance today. Oscar, on the other hand, added, MCK truly lives up to her reputation as these are stunning pieces of art. I believe all the girls would love it. I can already feel the sweet and sour taste of first love emanating from these works. However, Aiden ignored him and focused his attention on the necklace around the model's neck. With Liana's fair skin, lean neck, and stunning collarbone, this necklace would look spectacular on her. Perhaps no one else could look better than her with that necklace on. Subsequently, his gaze lowered to the ring on the model's hand. If Liana doesn't always cross the line, I don't mind giving her a ring. Let us welcome Miss MCK, the designer of Lux Jewelry's first love series, with the warmest applause. The host invited her after the models had left the stage. Following the applause, a figure gradually appeared in front of the stage. Hello, everyone. My name is MCK, and I work as a contract designer for Lux Jewelry. Holy sh asterisk t, isn't that your wife? Oscar exclaimed in shock. A frowning Aiden was speechless while gazing deeply toward the stage. On stage, Liana explained the product's design concept and materials under the guide of the host. As we all know, the series First Love targets younger consumers, so what does First Love mean to you, Miss MCK? Or, 
Do you have any good memories of your first love? The host asked. Taken aback by the public exposure, Liana was disoriented and had no idea where to look. She regained her composure after being reminded by the host and then answered, To me, first love is innocent and sweet. It will feel different each time you reminisce about it. As for memories, I believe that the most beautiful memories of first love are those that are kept hidden in the heart. Aiden, who had been silent for a long time, calmed down and pointed out as if he made a discovery, she is expressing her love for me. Oscar was baffled by his blatant words. She has no other first love other than me, the now suddenly talkative Aiden explained. Are you being serious? Aiden hooked his lips and looked around the stage leisurely. Not bad. She does know how to please me. At this point, the media and the audience seized the opportunity by asking, When was your first love, Miss MCK? After a long pause, she finally responded, During my university days. As if there were crickets in Aiden's seat, Oscar was also dumbfounded by that. Wow. Miss MCK, since you can't get him out of your mind, that person must be someone exceptional, right? Another reporter in the audience asked. After noticing Zoe, who was seated among the audience, signaling with her eyes continuously, the host finally reacted by asking the questions. We won't pry too deeply into Miss MCK's personal matters due to privacy. Let us continue with jewelry-related questions. The host then led the conversation and shifted the topic. With that, everyone naturally stopped questioning about her first love and the focus returned to the press conference. Seated below the stage was Anna, who gritted her teeth and muttered in anger, What's the deal with her? This woman is revolting. She married my cousin, but she still pines for her first love. After hearing her words, Zane cocked his head and asked, What did you say? Zane, she is the woman I told you about, the woman who forced my cousin to marry her by faking her pregnancy, so don't be fooled by her appearance. She schemes a lot and even my cousin has fallen for her tactics again. The deceived party seated in the corner wore a cold face and the corners of his lips pursed enough to show that he was suppressing his anger at the time. Beside him was Oscar, who was holding in his laughter for dear life in fear that he would burst into hysterics right at his seat. Just a moment ago, Aiden boldly showed off by saying, she is expressing her love for me. The next thing he knew, his wife slapped him across the face with a reality check. After the press conference, the lights in the auditorium were turned back on and two figures stood up almost simultaneously. As Liana made her way to the backstage, her chest felt tight and her stomach was churning with a sign to vomit. After she took a sip of water, Zoe ran over immediately and gushed, Nana, the conference was a success. The number of pre-sales is growing and the total pre-sale for our three products has surpassed a hundred thousand. This is crazy. Hearing the good news, Liana exhaled a sigh of relief. At least the outcome is favorable. Has Zane left? Liana inquired. She could not see anything as the lights in the auditorium were dim. I'm not sure. I haven't seen him earlier, but I don't think he left. He'll definitely come backstage to look for you. At that moment, a tall and slender figure appeared at the door, just as Zoe finished speaking. Aiden's face was icy, and his entire body was engulfed in a chilling aura. Liana and Zoe exchanged glances with the same thought in mind upon his arrival. Why is he here? A few seconds later, Zoe felt the atmosphere getting more tense, which made her stutter a little. I. Nana, I'll meet you at the door. Both of you can chat first. She bolted after saying that. At that moment, only the two of them were left in the dressing room. Aiden cast a light glance at the various pieces of jewelry on the table, then marched forward with his slender legs. Are you going to give me an explanation? Liana had no idea where his terrifying aura came from. When she saw him approaching, she took two steps back and leaned against the table. What? Explanation? Chapter 13 Relic in a Museum As you can see, I am one with a proper career. Would it be so outrageous for me to return to my roots? Liana answered with the assumption that Aiden was referring to the contract signing with Lux Jewelry. 
Did I ask you about this? he asked with a low tone. Then, what were you talking about? She was perplexed. You said. Just as Aiden was about to continue, Liana felt nauseated all of a sudden, and she quickly covered her mouth. However, the muffled sound of retching was still loud and clear. President Pearson, please stay away from me. I'm feeling a little sick, she warned while stretching out her other hand to push him away. Keep up with your act, he said nonchalantly. What a show you're putting on just to avoid the topic. Oh, I'm exposed. Haha. <laughs> what is it really that you wanted to ask? If there's nothing, I'll excuse myself to the bathroom, President Pearson. Since the day before yesterday, her morning sickness had been overwhelming. After a few wretches earlier, she was really about to vomit this time. Aiden gripped her wrist tightly and asked, in a cold voice, what happened to your first love? Liana was taken aback for a moment as she did not expect this to be the question he wanted to ask. It was just, first love, she answered. She looked up at him after finishing her sentence and solemnly added, President Pearson, this better not be a fuss you're trying to make. Don't you think that it's ironic to bring this up again, given the state of our current relationship? At that, he frowned and tightened his grip on her wrist even harder. What is our relationship, then? In the midst of a divorce. Leanna McKinney, quit challenging my patience. I don't understand. All I want is for him to agree with the reasonable, legal, and non-aggressive divorce that I'm proposing. How am I challenging his patience? That uneasy feeling returned just as she was about to ask, but he was still gripping her hand tightly. In a hurry, she grabbed a trash can nearby and vomited into it. Even though Aiden quickly retracted his hand, a few drops of vomit inevitably stained the cuffs of his shirt. Liana, he exclaimed while his face darkened instantly. After she finished throwing up, she picked up a glass of water and rinsed her mouth, before apologizing, I'm sorry, I couldn't hold back. Aiden removed his suit jacket and tossed it aside, before opening the window, to get rid of the odor in the room. President Pearson, if you don't mind, I really need to leave. Or, if you have time to divorce today, I'll let Zoe handle the magazine's affairs and come with you. He turned around and looked at her expressionlessly, his face a little colder than when he first arrived. Liana was confused. Can't he just wait a few moments? At this fraction of a moment, there was a knock on the door before Zoe's voice sounded, Have you finished chatting, Nana? The editor-in-chief, Laney, is looking for you. Okay. I'm almost done, she replied. With that, she turned to Aiden and excused herself. President Pearson, I'll get going first. Please wait for me outside for a while. Zoe dragged Liana out of the dressing room and wanted to run, but because Liana was pregnant, they could only power walk, didn't you say the editor-in-chief is looking for me? Liana inquired. It's a lie. Laney is currently socializing with those dignitaries. If I don't do that, how could I have saved you from that be asterisk starred? This left Liana speechless. Still, she's right. As they approached the door, a voice from the side called out, Liana. Both the ladies came to a halt at the same time. What's meant to come will always come. How, have you been, Liana? After a long silence at the hotel's entrance, Zane could not help but ask. I'm good, Liana replied while pursing her lips. It's been about half a month since I returned and I've been looking everywhere for you. Everyone's telling me that they haven't heard from you for a long time. To that, Liana remained silent. Three years ago, she severed contact with not only Zane, but also with all of her previous classmates. She did not want to tell anyone about the unspeakable. As a human, it was natural of her to want to preserve her meager, ridiculous dignity. Will you be leaving again this time? she asked with a smile after a while. Zane stared at her and shook his head. Liana, I. Zane. At that moment, Anna appeared out of nowhere and squeezed in between them. Caught off guard, Liana took a step back against the wall, behind, as she barely managed to keep her balance. Anna! Liana exclaimed with her pounding heart. Liana, your voice is unbearably loud. 
my cousin, Aiden, is right inside and you're here seducing another man in public. Are you not embarrassed? Anna roared at her. Liana could not be any paler at this point as her blood seemed to freeze from head to toe. She had never considered hiding her marriage from Zane, but she also had not anticipated the reveal to turn out like this. From the mouth of Anna. Zane, who had always been good-tempered, became enraged and flung Anna's hand away before questioning, Anna, what are you doing here? Taken aback once again by his attitude at her, Anna's eyes instantly turned red and she yelled angrily, this is for your own good, Zane. Why don't you ask her what she did to my cousin? Is she brave enough to admit it? There's nothing I'm not willing to admit, Liana stated calmly, but Anna, I did warn you. If you're still so incompetent in walking like a normal human being, maybe it's time I teach you. Anna had been dazzled by jealousy to the point where she could no longer reason. She had never seen Zane speak to her so gently, yet he was doing it to Liana. You're no relic in a museum. Do you think you're untouchable? Anna challenged Liana as she was about to push her again when Zane intervened. Stop it, Anna. Zane, how long have you known her? Why don't you believe me?